Bitcoin was created by the spies at the US National Security Agency. This theory is not new, but it's back in the news and gaining traction in some crypto circles. What happened? Does the theory have any credibility? What the hell are you talking about? My name is Jessica, and in this video, we're going to dig into the mystery that has shrouded crypto since 2008. Who created Bitcoin? First, let's dive into a little context. The identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous author of the Bitcoin white paper, is one of the most enduring mysteries in the cryptocurrency world. Satoshi actively worked to build Bitcoin in mid-2011. Then, in April of that year, Satoshi emailed Mike Hearn, one of the early developers who was, by then, collaborating on building Bitcoin, saying, and I quote, I've moved on to other things. It, i.e. Bitcoin, is in good hands. It was the ultimate mic drop. After handing over the source code repository and network alert key to the developer Gavin Anderson, who then became the project lead, Satoshi vanished. In the ensuing years, several people have been identified as possible Satoshis. Two frontrunner candidates are Hal Finney and Nick Sabo, both renowned cryptographers. Hal was one of the first users to mine Bitcoin and received the first ever transaction from Satoshi. However, Hal denied being Satoshi before he sadly passed away in 2014. Nick, on the other hand, actually developed a digital currency called Bitgold in the late 1990s, before Bitcoin's inception. The striking parallels between the principles of Bitgold and Bitcoin have led many to suspect that Sabo might be Satoshi. However, he's also denied the link. Then there was that Newsweek story in 2014 that quote unquote exposed a Japanese American man called Dorian Pretense Satoshi Nakamoto. Aside from his name and the fact that Dorian had worked on classified defense projects, the story was baseless. Dorian denied the connection, but was still hounded at his home by insatiable media outlets. It wasn't pretty. On the plus side, a fundraiser started by crypto OG Andreas Antonopoulos to support Dorian brought in a whopping 102 Bitcoin worth around $2.8 million today. So not a bad haul. There have also been those who have claimed to be Satoshi. Craig Wright, an Australian computer scientist and entrepreneur, has made several public claims asserting that he is the real Satoshi Nakamoto and has even launched legal actions against people who have publicly doubted this claim. My opinion? Well, I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. However, while some people have claimed to be Satoshi and others have had such claims made on their behalf, there is another line of thinking. This goes that Satoshi wasn't an individual, but actually a group of people or a government entity. And here's where the NSA theory comes in. For those that are unfamiliar, the NSA, as per its mission statement, and I quote, prevents and eradicates threats to the US national security systems. How it does this is one of the reasons why the NSA is one of the most controversial of all US government institutions. 10 years ago, former NSA contractor Edward Snowden orchestrated one of the most shocking leaks of classified information in history. The exposure unveiled the extent of the NSA's mass surveillance programs, both domestically and internationally. Snowden revealed that the agency was secretly collecting phone records, emails, and internet activities of millions of individuals through major companies like Google, Facebook, and Apple without warrants or public knowledge. Those targeted included everyone from your granny to American citizens and politicians in US allied countries. The revelations caused international uproar, accusations of Orwellian-like spying and debates over privacy and security. It was known as the PRISM scandal, PRISM being the NSA codename for the project. However, Snowden also revealed another project that is inextricably linked to PRISM, but got much less attention. This project was dubbed Bull Run in spy speak. It shows how the NSA, along with the UK counterpart, the Government Communications Headquarters, or GCHQ, clandestinely cooperated to undermine the encryption algorithms and protocols that protect internet communication. This, in turn, allowed the NSA to access encrypted data. 
We'll get back to Project Ball Run in a little later in the story, but for now, let me tell you a little anecdote about GCHQ, which has fueled speculation that government agencies created Bitcoin. In 1977, three faculty members at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology created a complex piece of math that helped keep online information secure and private. The algorithm, known as RSA, is widely used for secure data transmissions and is also a big part of how cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin keep transactions safe. It was called RSA after the surnames of the three academics who created it, Rivas, Shamir, and Adelman. However, while these three got the credit for RSA, it was actually invented years earlier by Clifford Cox, a well-known British mathematician and codebreaker who was working at the UK GCHQ. Then again, maybe it's not such a bad thing that the algorithm didn't get Clifford's surname. Anyway, Clifford's discovery was kept classified. It only came to light when documents were declassified in 1977. The GCHQ story illustrates two things. Firstly, don't work for a spy agency if you want credit for your work. More importantly, for the sake of this story, anyway, spy agencies have expertise in cryptography and the resources to fund groundbreaking innovation. Put differently, the CGHQ story shows that it's not far-fetched to believe that the NSA had a part to play in Bitcoin's creation. Let's unpack the theory a little bit further. Proponents of the NSA story point to the fact that the spy agency created the SHA-256 hashing algorithm. If you're unfamiliar, SHA-256 is a cryptographic hash function which has since been adopted by digital currencies like Bitcoin. In the most simplified terms, SHA-256 helps make sure transactions are secure and genuine. It does so by turning transaction information into a unique code to keep it safe. If the information is messed with, the code changes signaling that something's wrong. Not only was the NSA behind SHA-256, it was also behind a 1996 paper titled How to Make a Mint, the cryptography of anonymous electronic cash. That's right, the NSA has been interested in digital cash since at least the mid-1990s. The paper outlined fundamental principles required to create anonymous digital cash systems. It discussed various cryptographic techniques and protocols that could be employed to develop a digital currency system where identity of the users remained anonymous. Sounds familiar? Or how about Tsuki Okaboto? He is one of the cryptography academics listed in the NSA paper. Proponents of the NSA created Bitcoin theory believe the fact that this name sounds very similar to Satoshi Nakamoto is not a coincidence, but actually more of an inside joke. The range of theories around the NSA creating Bitcoin is pretty vast. Some believe the NSA involvement in SHA-256 means the agency created a backdoor to the Bitcoin code and secretly controls Bitcoin. Remember Project Bull Run? Since we know the NSA and the GCHQ are involved in efforts to crack encryption codes, why wouldn't they simply add a backdoor to SHA-256? Well, this sounds plausible, but if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll realize that it's unlikely. First, it's not unusual for government agencies to develop technology that is then used by others, a point I'll get back to later. More than that, SHA-256 is open source. This means that anyone can scrutinize its code. It was created back in 2001. The fact that no one has spotted a backdoor in the years since almost certainly means there isn't one. Now let's turn to a more plausible theory and the reason why the NSA story has been back in the crypto news recently. Nick Carter, a partner at venture capital firm Castle Island Ventures and a well-known Bitcoiner, reminded people on X that he is still a proponent of the NSA origin story. If you're unfamiliar, Nick isn't some conspiratorial hack. He is a prominent speaker, impressive writer, an analyst, and also a respected figure in the crypto industry. Nick calls it the Bitcoin lab leak hypothesis. He posits that it wasn't a program that was approved by the NSA. In other words, the NSA didn't write the Bitcoin white paper. Instead, as he wrote on X last month, and I quote, I think it was a shuddered internal R&D project, which one researcher thought was too good to lay fallow on the shelf and chose to secretly release. In a following post, he clarifies his position, saying, and I quote, 
This doesn't imply the US government secretly controls all of the Satoshi coins, by the way. In my version of this made up idea, the researcher did without permission of the NSA and chose to leave the coins behind as so to preserve his anonymity. It's certainly possible. Another credible voice in the NSA developed Bitcoin camp is former Goldman Sachs executive Ralph Powell. He suggested that Bitcoin could have been created jointly by the NSA and the GCHQ as a means to experiment with potential ways to get out of future financial disasters. Raoul has also suggested that the timing of the Bitcoin's release during the financial crisis is not a coincidence, and he cited that the 1996 paper as further evidence of this theory. Cointelegraph magazine asked Jeff Mann, a former NSA cryptanalyst, whether the NSA had the resources to create Bitcoin. Jeff's response was, and I quote, it's certainly a possibility, it's certainly feasible. So far, so plausible. We interrupt this program for an emergency crypto weather forecast. Get ready for a whirlwind of savings. We're seeing some high pressure sign up bonus systems forming in the Northeast, with some exchanges offering up to $40,000. In the South, we'll be seeing some heavy discounts on hardware wallets. So watch out for those if you're going to be out and about. And then in central areas, there's a high chance of trading fee discounts, which should be settling in later on. So be on the lookout for up to 60% off there. Lush! For a more comprehensive forecast, just visit coinbureau.com slash deals or use the link down in the description. These deals are red hot, so make sure to take all the necessary precautions. Well, that's all for today's forecast. Now back to the scheduled program. Now let's look at the counter argument. While Jeff Mann did say the NSA origin story is feasible, he also believed it was unlikely. According to Jeff, this is principally because of the atmosphere in the NSA following the Watergate scandal in 1972, where individuals connected to then President Richard Nixon illegally installed listening devices to eavesdrop on conversations at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. Now, as Jeff tells it, in the aftermath of Watergate, the NSA and other agencies were under immense pressure not to do anything that was even remotely suggestive of spying on American citizens without a warrant. Therefore, he feels like the development of digital cash like Bitcoin for the means of spying would have been too risky in this regard. As he says, although an innovation like Bitcoin could have theoretically been used to spy on American enemies, it would have been, and I quote, hard to prove or disprove perhaps who the targets were or who were the potential targets. In the atmosphere of the time, a project like Bitcoin wouldn't have gotten off the ground. However, that was then. Jeff left the NSA in 1996. Five years later, the 9-11 attacks changed the world forever. The US Patriot Act, which was signed into law by President George Bush in 2001, vastly expanded the powers of the US agencies, including the NSA. Among other things, the Patriot Act granted increased surveillance powers to law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies, allowing them to monitor communications and gather intelligence to prevent terrorist activities. However, the prison scandal that Snowden exposed shows how the NSA went far beyond merely spying on suspected terrorists. In the decade or so since Jeff left the NSA, the organization evolved technologically, but regressed morally. The argument Jeff made about the NSA not spying on its own citizens doesn't really hold water after 9-11. So what about the argument linking the NSA to SHA-256? While it is true that the NSA created the algorithm, this particular piece of quote-unquote evidence doesn't really hold water. As I mentioned earlier, SHA-256 is open source and highly, highly unlikely to have a backdoor. Moreover, it's not uncommon for government agencies to create technology that's used and adapted by others. Take DARPA, for example. DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, is a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense that invests in breakthrough technologies for national security. It has a really long history of investing in cutting edge technologies that have subsequently been used in the private sector. DARPA has been involved in everything from the creation of the internet to cloud computing, the dark web browser tool, artificial intelligence, Aspen Movie Map, which is the predecessor to Google Maps, and so much more. Seriously, DARPA is a fascinating organization. Its impact on technology has been pretty revolutionary. Anyway, my broader point is that Seen through the lens, 
there is nothing unusual about the NSA being behind SHA-256. But what about the 1996 paper on digital cash? Surely that's a smoking gun. Well, not really. On one hand, it does show the NSA's interest in digital money. And yes, there are some content connections to the Bitcoin white paper. But this, quote, evidence is circumstantial at best. For one, the paper's public. If the NSA was secretly developing digital cash, it would have kept it secret. Two, there is no evidence that the authors of the 1996 paper were in any way involved in the creation of Bitcoin. Three, the naming similarity between Toshiki Okamoto and Satoshi Nakamoto is a nice coincidence, but it's totally out of sync with the NSA practice. Spy agencies are not in the habit of leaving clues. Fourth, unlike Bitcoin, which is notable for its decentralized structure, the models in the paper are dependent on a supervising entity. In that key retrospect, the paper runs contrary to one of the pillars of Bitcoin and crypto more generally, which is decentralization. And finally, the fifth piece of evidence is the fact that the 1996 paper includes a whole section titled security, which highlights concerns for governments using digital currencies. These concerns, which persist to this day, are part of the reason some governments want to crack down on crypto. For instance, the report notes that, and I quote, the potential risks in electronic commerce are magnified when anonymity is present, adding that anonymity can be used to launder and counterfeit money, as well as evade taxes. According to David Rosenthal, a cryptocurrency skeptic, he says, the idea that the NSA would develop a decentralized, trustless cryptocurrency as a monetary bioweapon that would impair their own government functions is implausible. Okay, so you might be thinking that those counter-arguments are convincing, but not overwhelmingly so. They certainly present a strong counter-argument to the notion that the NSA authored the Bitcoin white paper and was involved in its early development. But it doesn't disprove the notion put forward by Nick Carter. It's certainly plausible that a rogue NSA employee acting without the backing of the agency built on the findings of academics and cryptographers to author the Bitcoin white paper. However, it's also plausible that any number of privacy-focused individuals who have a particular set of skills built on previous research created the most groundbreaking of technologies. Maybe in a few years, when government documents become declassified, we'll have more clues about who Satoshi Nakamoto really is. Maybe the real author will reveal his or her identity after their death. Or maybe we'll never really know. And so the identity of crypto's chief architect will remain a shrouded mystery for now, at any rate. So what do you think? Do you find Nick's argument convincing? If not, who do you think was behind Bitcoin? Do you think we will ever solve this mystery? Does it even matter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you learned anything from this video, then smash the like button, share it with a friend or an enemy, whomever you like really, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you are looking for the best crypto deals on the market, then the Coin Bureau deals page is where you should go. It has exchange bonuses of up to $40,000, as well as trading fee discounts of up to 60%, and discounts on hardware wallets too. So be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description, as well as a ton of useful resources if you want to explore the topic further in detail. So that's all from me. Take care and see you next time.